Today we are cutting what are possibly the smallest diameter valve seats I have ever cut on these two N62 Continental blocks out of Massey Harris Pony tractors. We're going to be cutting the counterboards for the new intake and exhaust valve seat inserts, installing the inserts, resurfacing the deck surfaces of each block, cutting our seat profiles, and regrinding the new valves. But to begin, we'll be installing all new valve guides in both blocks. In case you missed it, check the link in the description for the previous video of this project where we disassembled and cleaned both blocks including removing the old valve guides and bored and honed the blocks for oversized pistons. We're using Goodson Press Fit lubricant on the parent bores of the blocks and the valve guides themselves, then using a driver and the air hammer to drive them into place. The provided specification from a service manual indicates that the guides are to be installed with a distance from the block face to the top of the guide of 25 32 of an inch. That's a fun one for the metric guys out there. I'll be honest, I did have a few guides that I overshot the mark by just a bit, so I set up a bolt and some spacers that I could use as a puller to pull the guides back up to within the desired spec. On a set of guides like this, we typically like to hit the nominal height spec within plus or minus 10 thou. Next, we need to size our valve guides for the specified valve stem clearance. With an exhaust valve stem measured, we see that the guides are already sitting around the specified three and a half thou clearance, and after measuring an intake valve stem, we see that the guides already sit around the specified 1.8 thou clearance. So rather than using the valve guide hone to increase the size, we'll just give each valve guide just a few strokes to take down any tight spots that may have resulted from the installation process. We'll also use our valve guide pilot that will be used when cutting the valve seats later on as a quick size check. It should be a very tight slip fit. With the valve guides in each block sized to the proper inner diameter, it's time to set up our tooling to cut the counterbores for the valve seats. The seats we're using are 15 16 7 inch nominal diameter, so we're setting up an adjustable cutter to cut the counterbore to a diameter of 0.9375 inches. In most cases, we have fixed diameter tooling for cutting seat counterbores, but I don't have any that go this small. With the block mounted on the 34.5 valve seat machine, we'll put our pilot into one of the valve guides and adjust the fixture until we're level. These guides are not quite perpendicular to the deck surface, so the fixture is slightly tilted. It's important to note that the leveling system of the 30 compensates for slight misalignments between guides. As you can see, the valve guide pilot rides inside the guide in order to align and stabilize the valve seat tooling to the valve guide. Starting on the first seat here, we'll lower the spindle until the cutting insert touches off on the top of the block, at which point we'll zero the digital depth readout on the machine, and use one of our valve seat inserts to set the spindle stop to prevent cutting our counterbores too deep. I like to run our pilots as tight as possible, so I always run with some lubricant on the pilot to prevent seizing the tooling in the guide. With that, we'll cut our first counterbore. Now for the moment of truth. We'll grab a snap gauge and the micrometer to check how we did and verify whether or not we'll have adequate press fit on the new seats. The counterbore came out at a diameter of 0.9382 inches, a little bit over what we set the micrometer to, and our valve seats measure 0.9429 inches, but that gives us plenty of press at 4.7 thousandths. With the confidence that our tooling is set to a good diameter, we went ahead and began cutting the rest of our seats. Ahead of cutting our seats, we had taken note that the block would be a bit thin under the intake seats as two seats share one port on these blocks. With that said, I didn't cut straight to our full seat depth right away as I wanted to keep an eye and make sure that there would be material left to support the seats. 
We opted to leave the intake seat counterbores 30 thousandths shy of the depth of the exhaust seat counterbores, ensuring that there would be adequate support underneath the seats, but that the counterbores would be deep enough that the seats will stay put during operation. With all of the seat counterbars cut on the first block, it was time to drive in all of the new seat inserts. However, that first required turning down a wrist pin on the crankshaft grinder that could be used as a driver, as once again, all of the tooling that we have on the shelf was too large for this seat diameter. The valve seats came from the factory with a pretty large radius on the bottom side, which is nice normally, but since we left the intake seat counterbores shallow, I decided to make a small chamfer just on the top side of the seat and install them upside down so that we can keep as much contact area as possible. Once installed, we'll trim off the top side, which is technically the bottom side, but just trust me, what I said really does make sense. Again, you can see that all of the intake seats sit slightly proud of the deck surface of the block, so using the same cutter that we used to cut the counterbars initially, we'll simply touch off on the top of one of the exhaust seats, set the DRO to zero, and then cut all of the intake seats to match. The process is going to be repeated on the second block, although it's already in much rougher condition than the first block. Over the years, this block has definitely been remanufactured at least once, if not multiple times, with the seats having been cut quite a bit deeper. Our new seat inserts will still fix the function of the block to be better than new, but unfortunately, the aesthetics will never be quite the same. Right now might be a good time to remind you all to hit that like button, drop us a comment so that the cleaning guy can read them during his breaks, and as always, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, as nearly 75% of you are currently unsubscribed. Before moving on to actually cutting our valve seat angles, we're going to resurface the decks of both blocks to ensure that our customer won't have any head gasket sealing issues once these engines go back together. Some red die chem will provide a visual for the low spots that are warped or worn as the surfacing process is performed. As always, the goal in the engine remanufacturing industry should always be to remove as little material as possible to achieve your desired result. Sure, it would be a lot faster to take a single 15 thousandths cut and clean up the deck in one pass, but if you take your time and make multiple passes that are much smaller cuts, you'll leave more material for the next guy to reman this block in another couple of decades, as long as things go well. The first block, which is the nicer of the two, cleaned up in just under 5 thousandths of an inch, which isn't too bad for an engine of this age. With the second block on the machine, we went ahead and touched off the cutter and repeated the process. As I recall, the deck surface on this block was already around 5 thousandths shorter than the first block, which makes sense with our theory that this engine has already been remanned once before. Someone also got a little aggressive with this block when removing the head somewhere along the way, and left quite a few dings along the edge, some of which are definitely in critical gasket sealing areas. We can use a dial indicator to get a feel for how much we will need to remove to clean those up, and when it was all said and done, we removed a total of 11 thousandths off the deck.
Since the valve seats are so small on these blocks, we picked up a micro tip holder from Goodson for our valve seat tooling. Even with the micro tip holder, our standard cutting inserts hit the pilot before adjusting small enough to cut these seats, so we also picked up some of their micro seat cutting inserts, which move in the seat profile closer to the valve guide pilot, allowing us to adjust our tooling to a smaller diameter. The service manual specifies that the seats should be cut to a 45 degree angle that are a 16th of an inch wide, so our cutting insert is a 3 angle insert with a 60 degree bottom angle, a 1.5 millimeter wide 45 degree seat angle, and a 30 degree top angle. Using our setting tool, we can check against one of our new valves and then match the cutter to the proper diameter. We'll be cutting both the intake and exhaust seats to the same profile and diameter, so we checked both the intake and exhaust valves against the tool. For prior experience, I know that the material of these seats cuts the best and leaves the best finish when you run the spindle fast, so for the most part, we maxed out the spindle at around 840 RPM. Before cutting our seat to the full depth, we'll put some color on our valves and spin them on the seat, rubbing the color off where the seat contacts the valve face and giving us an indication of how the diameter of our tooling is. At this point, I liked where the bottom angle of the seat started on the valve face, so I decided to go ahead and move forward with cutting the seat to the full depth. Apologies for the squeaking. In the case of these seats, the proper depth is going to be when we have a small amount of bottom angle, our full 45 degree seat angle all the way around, and just a sliver of the top angle visible on the high side of the seat opposite the cylinders. The seat looked pretty well centered on our intake valve face, but the exhaust valve face is slightly thinner, so I decided to make a slight increase on the diameter of the valve seat tooling to get the seat contacting the valve face closer to the center. Being happy with how all of the seat angles and diameters came out, it was time to go ahead and move forward with cutting all of the seats to the full depth on both of the blocks. I've had a lot of people asking for some longer machining segments, so we'll show each of the seats here. If that's not for you, feel free to skip ahead a bit.
It's not uncommon to find valves that aren't ground well out of the box, especially on something that's new old stock, but when I started grinding these, I was amazed at how far off they were. After taking a closer look, I noticed that it's very likely that someone had reground these valves very poorly somewhere along the way, based on the differences in the thickness of the margin and the valve faces. They'll be okay, but this is why we often like to regrind valves even if they are new. After the valve cleaned up, I pulled it out of the chuck and then rechucked it so that we could verify how it looked, and after grinding it on our machine we ended up with just a few tenths run out as opposed to several thousandths run out that it had before. The exhaust valves also weren't perfect, but they were much closer than the intake had been. Even so, we went ahead and reground all of them as well. We always talk about rust being like a cancer, and after just a couple of days time, the surface rust is already reappearing on the second block. This rust is all within the chamber area and won't affect any gasket sealing, but unfortunately, it's simply not pretty. Regardless, we went through and did our final vacuum check and then put the first block back up on the machine to vacuum check those seats as well. Everything passed with flying colors and we're very happy with how these blocks came out. For now, we'll oil them down in an effort to prevent any further rust and box up the reground valves while we continue the search for pin bushings that we need to recondition the connecting rods before these blocks can be reassembled. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.